Have you seen men wash their f***ing faces? I wonder if I should turn off the Demelios playing in the background. I'm holding on. Like, what does it say about me that I'm catching up on that right now? Hi, welcome back to another episode of Lizzie's Barely in Frame. Today is a new day, you guys. Last week was heavy, it was hard, it was a lot for everyone involved. We're in this together, so I've got your back. I feel you having mine. This week, we're getting out of the house. We're going to Glendale, we're making pizza. Ozzy's Pizza. Ozzy's Pizza looks good and tastes better. It's the branch out of TikTok's favorite dog and dog dad, Ozzy and Chris. It's a thing that my friend Chris created, inspired by his aggressive, angry Chawini. Annoying things to your dog that they do to you. Part one of one. Begging for food. Hi, 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 Kai food, hi, hi. Chris is a comic. He also has ginger tones. I'm blonde. We also have a visitor dog. Hi, Wolfie. Mr. Bubs is in the living room watching the Demilios. I think I need to change this shirt because it's just got sh all over it. What do I do? Look, I should change, right? Yeah, we're changing. I'm wearing mommy, can we keep it? We are gonna get ready for this vlog. I never do that, but I figure if I'm gonna be in public, I should try, oh we shouldn't have, whatever. I usually don't do my concealer first. <laughs> Nobody asked for my tutorial, but here it is. I'm gonna use my NARS Mont Blanc. Two squirts of that bitch. A power squat and a rub in that I can barely see because I don't have my glasses on. I bet when I'm editing this later, I'm like, oh wow, that's not a blended in job. So I've started using different on my face. That being said, this makeup routine is new to me. Really, it's just about making these pits of hell that are my black eyes a little bit lighter. And I just started using Rare Beauty, which I love, and I do like high cheekbone, high cheekbone. Hi, Temple, what's up, how are ya? And then a little bit on the top of my face. This is mad pigmented, a little goes a long way, so I just do that, that's all I do. And then I look like a normal girl, like Queen Amidala. I don't Star Wars, I'm not even gonna pretend like that's part of my pick me dorky girl brand. That's not the worst I've ever seen, but I definitely associate it with <laughs> negative points in my life. It's like when you drink raspberry smirnoff and throw up your guts, and you don't really wanna around with Rajmary Smirnoff again, and that's kind of what Star Wars has become for me. If you take your glasses off and like wince, she's like, she's a mood. Okay, cool. I'm really liking Jeffree Star's Liquid Star Shadow, because it gives just an effortless little, well, that might be a bit more than effortless, pigment. Oh yeah, she, uh, she went there. She didn't need to go that hard. I am she. We'll blend it out, kind of smoke out the eye. Wow, that's pretty, Jeffrey. And then Haley Bieber one time told me to lift my concealer under my eye. Is that correct? Not personally, but she said it on the internet and I took it personally. I'm also low-key considering not brushing my teeth again before I leave the house. That might be a sick bitch thing to do. That's it, that's really all I'm gonna do. Now I'm just gonna set it. I like to cut with a little bit of heavy powder there. I get my little schnoot. Oh, I use the La Mercier setting powder. Great, it's like I did nothing. I like to spend a little time making my face look like I did absolutely nothing. And then, because I'm insecure, I am gonna give myself a little bit more pink chink and also blend it out with some Too Faced bronzer that is in my shade. Get my little snoop down to my sideburns and under my chin. And then I'm going to do a little bit of Highlight, I got this palette from Shane. I got all this makeup from Shane. This is Gluteant Makeup via Shane Dawson. Thanks, Daddy. And then I put a little bit of in the corners of my eye because it lightens everything up in there, I hope. And then a little bit on my Cupid's bow. Cute! And then I take Maven Beauty Rose Water Setting Spray. And love that shit. Then I curl my lashes. Then I'm gonna take my Clear Brow Gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And we're gonna brush those fur tangles up. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna go in with the, they're real! I got a traveler's size because I just recently bought a new mascara from Honest that I love. And then I lost my luggage at Denver Airport like a dummy, but they found it, so I get it back. But I only bought a traveler's size because I was hoping they would find it. And guess what, they did guys, they did. Oh, I got you lips. Do I look like a dead body? 
Do I need clean pants? Not really. And then we'll just do a little gloss. A little Jeffree Star high gloss. I need to clean my glasses. They're dirty. Bye. We're in Glendale. Oh, I still have my headphones in. I gotta put these back in the car. How embarrassing. I don't know why, but it feels like it's okay for me to be a vlogger in public in Glendale. Oh wow, was all of that super close? Jesus. She's a mess. Hmm. This mother has me waiting outside and I don't have any sunscreen on. This is a ginger on ginger hate crime. Still not a ginger. Ah. What's going on? Sweet Crocs, dude. Yeah, right? Badass. They're no slip, too. And I found out you can eat your Crocs if you get caught, like in the desert. Don't eat your Crocs, guys. That's a rumor. It was started by a camp counselor. I didn't read the entire short answer on Google, but this is a lesson in critical thinking. We all have smartphones in our hands. Google everything, especially whether or not you can eat something like Crocs when people like Chris tell you you can. Because people like Chris tend to be wrong about eating Crocs. I don't know him that well, but I can say 100% of the time, Chris has been wrong about whether or not you can consume a Croc. Wow, it's loud in here. Yeah, you get an apron and one that's already beaten in too. You've been knighted. I used to work in a pizza place. Nice. So far I've only had three guests and all of them were gingers. I mean, I have a ginger beard, but this is blonde hair, I wanna clarify. He's a toehead, but we'll count it. Cause my mom's not a ginger either, but she did make me. So it's like, she's an ally. My dad my whole life told me that when I turned like uh, 21, that this was gonna go black. My hair was like, I'd have a full beard. And when I turned 21, my hair got blonder. My beard was bright red. So I was like, dad, are you my dad? And he was like, we'll talk another time. And then he went out for cigarettes and never, never came, came back. back. Is this a special kind of fire? This is a gas fire custom brick oven. So what it is is the, the, the fire mimics like wood or coal and then it heats up the bricks to be super, super hot. So thermometer. So Lizzie is 93 degrees Fahrenheit. She's dying. That's good to know. <laughs> Knew it. The bricks are already at 640 degrees, which is where we want to start. I turn this thing on at like eight in the morning and it takes that long to get ready and it's what, like three o'clock now? That's how long this takes to get ready. It's a long time. Time. If you watch my vlog, you'll realize I'm a lady that doesn't have a lot of time, Chris. <laughs> That's why I'm rushing. We have plenty of raw meatballs to go around. I'm wondering if I should have worn a bandana. I did wear a shirt that's about aggressive dogs because we both have aggressive dogs. Here's a more colorful version of him too. He's the best tattoo ever. So the dose fermented for three days, we make it fresh. Cold fermented, meaning this, I'll show you. Do you make it? And then you put it in the cooler and then it grows. Bacteria, all that fun stuff. And then the day you're gonna cook, you gotta pull it out and let it double in size. And we have the dough balls right here. And this is what Lizzie's gonna turn into a pizza. Also, if you have a dairy allergy or you're gluten free, I don't care. I do have a gluten allergy, but I'm also so depressed no, no, that I'm you're welcoming. Ginger. You have a sun allergy. <laughs> I thought we clarified this. You're allergic to the sun. Well, I'm allergic to everything, including adhesive and band aids. I actually figured that out in the most embarrassing way possible. Okay, so when I was 20, I found out I had skin cancer. Okay. And so they had to cut out an inch around and down. I had a uh, stage two malignant melanoma. Oh, so they had to take a yeah. ton of skin out. Yeah. And then afterwards they stitch you up and you have to change your own bandage and put Neosporin on it. Yeah. And that's when I found out I'm allergic to both the adhesive and bandages and Neosporin <laughs> because my, it, my wound swelled up like a mother but my doctor was in New York, so I had to send them pictures of what was going on so that they could help me. Yeah. And I was in California. So every morning I'd take a picture of it and we'd track the progress. And if I got to a certain level of that, I'd have to go to the emergency room. Yeah. Years later, I was showing a picture of it to a new roommate. And she goes, Lizzie, I can see your whole coochie in this picture. And I was like, what? And I've been sending full ass pictures of my entire vagina to everyone in my family and my doctor because I'd be naked in the morning after a shower just taking a picture straight down. But the wound was so fucked up that I never noticed my own coochie. And that is the title of my autobiography. You by Coochie McCoocherson. All right, you're flattening that out. Yep. At Red Brick, we had something that was like a big squish. So, I will, yeah, that's a dough press. Those are, those are stupid. But that's what chain people do, they do stupid things. So what I make is New Haven style uh, a pizza. Cause I grew up in Connecticut and that's like the major style of pizza. 
is thin, crispy. People call it burnt if you've never had it before, but it's not burnt, it's just cooked well. Before you touch anything, yes. put your hands in the flour. Now throw it in the air like you're LeBron. The flour? Yep. Throw it in the air? No, I'm kidding. Oh. Like this. You gotta be careful because I'm impulsive as f. It's okay. Take wood. some like this, put it in your hands. Uh -huh. Make sure you're catching it all. And then just. Over the dough? Yeah. Get the day started. There you go. And now <laughs> we have photographic proof that she's a moron. So this is perfect. We might, we might not even have photographic proof because I am a moron and we might neither of us be in frame. Hey, frame, shmame, you know. Oh, yeah, we're really not in frame. Perfect. All right, then we smooth out the dough. Smooth it out. The dough's done. So now I'm going to see how wide it is. So it should be about, we do 12 inch pizzas. So then we put it on the peel. Okay. So the peel is this wooden thing that you slide the pizza in the oven on, not the paddle which is metal. This is where it gets confusing. I know. Follow me. Paddle. Metal. Wood. Peel. Mitchell. Manager. Hey, Mitchell. All right. All right, so we'll just make a, we'll make a Lizzie special. Awesome. Do you have black olives? No, because I'm not stupid. Am I in this? You're in frame. Cool. So first things first, you got to do sauce. Sauce. So this stays on here now. We have a certain amount of time before it gets sticky and it's not going to work. So. Okay. And this is homemade sauce. I make it fresh every day. California tomatoes. Take about almost that much. Almost okay. the top. Just like, uh, just like, just enough. Just enough. And then you always put it in the middle. People think you gotta like, like spread it all around. You do, but you gotta start in the middle. Cause if you don't start in the middle, it's gonna get soupy when you cook it. And it's just gonna fall apart. So now Lizzie's gonna take this without me telling her what to do and figure out how to spread it all over the place. Is this good? No, it's hard. Really? Yeah. It feels really right. It feels right, but it feels it's also raw. All I would say is try to get some of the stuff that's in the middle out to the sides. Because what happens is when you cook, you yeah. don't realize it, it's, but it's an angle because it's going to rise a little. Right. And it's going to go to the middle. So right. the less in the middle, the better because it's going to eventually go in the middle. Do I want to cover the whole crust? No. Nope, okay. Because nope, I want crust on my pizza. A little bit, not too much. All right, so that's perfect. Cheese is the fun part, because people always freak out about how to put cheese on a pizza. All I want to do is itch my nose right now. I just need you to know that I'm not doing it. Understand, you follow the rules of the kitchen. Okay. About a handful of cheese, freshly shredded cheese every day, mozzarella. What you do is, what people freak out is like, how do you put cheese on a pizza? It's so simple. You start high, and you start from the edges, and then you fill it in. And now it's done. And then it fills in because it'll melt, because this is the right kind of mozzarella, and it'll do that. But Lizzie, because she's eccentric, wants to put a bunch of on the pizza, so go ahead. Go Should nuts. we put more cheese on it? If you want, go for it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, bitch. You got good, I'm not kidding, you have good technique for a uh, chain pizza connoisseur. Also, I was just a, just a plate cleaner. So we have pepperoni, we got some salami. But no pineapple? No pineapple because I'm not, um, what's the word? Uh, trash? Trash person, yes. Right, I'm a trash person. I know. I do have some great pepperoni. I'll do pepperonis. Go for it. Are you going to make a face on the on the pizza? You know, I'm not a face on the pizza kind of bitch. It's overrated. I worked at Togo's as well. At the end of the day, I wouldn't want to make more meatballs. So I just take a meatball and cut it into a bunch of pieces and then smear it like jam into uh -huh. the bowl. And one time this guy called and he was like, it feels like there's just like one meatball cut up into a bunch of little pieces. And I was like, that is a very astute thing you have picked up on there, sir. And I was fired from there. And yeah. then mushrooms. Okay. And then that's it. Go there. And then maybe more cheese. Uh, yeah, we'll put the finishing cheese on top. Okay, good. I'm glad that you have a finishing cheese. We got a starter cheese, a finishing cheese, uh, still in college cheese, uh, a <laughs> postgraduate a post -graduate cheese, MBA cheese. We got the whole thing. Now take a little Parmesan. A little Parmesan. Like, remember how uh, you took a lot of mozzarella? Yeah. Take like not even that, yeah, much? that much. Yep, because it's a strong cheese. And then sprinkle it all over. Perfect. And this is the finisher cheese? Yep. Feels like I should put more. If you want, go for it. I love me some Parmesan. This is like the real good stuff. So Ooh. now, here, take it. This is her pizza she just made. That's my pizza. It looks pretty good. So we do a thing called the shake test before we put it in to make sure it comes off the peel. And it's moving, so that's good. Now this is the fun part. <gasps> We're just gonna slide it right in. Feels like just yesterday she was a little orb in this little ball over here. How long does it take? Uh, this will. About 10 minutes, give or take. That's it? Yeah. Wow, pizza making might be for me. I'm gonna put you in charge of our friend here. This is Stabby McStab Stab. Okay. Stabby McStab Stab gets rid of the air bubbles that we don't want in a pizza. So now we get to watch paint dry, basically. 
Uh, just for the record, we do not sponsor Ginger Vloggers here at this restaurant. She is working for her pizza today. I'm okay with earning everything I have. It's true. I mean, she was five minutes late, but that's fine. It's okay. Was I five minutes late? Yeah, you know, on like a clock. Get your ass up and work. We're doing a thin crust New Haven charred pizza. So now, I see a bubble forming. Uh -oh. So Stabby McStab, get, get in there. Get me, get me. Where's Mike Snide? That guy? Yep, stab it up. <laughs> I tell you that I filled my whole body with anxiety I don't to the point that I could faint right now. <laughs> it looks cooked, but it's not ready yet because we want the bottom to be nice and crispy and the sides. So that little black stuff there, that's not burnt, that's char. That's delicious char. But there is a difference between burnt pizza and charred pizza. And that's if it's made by an idiot or it's made by a ginger loving blonde fool. And that's me. Yeah. It's like the difference between Hidden Valley Ranch and Good Ranch. Yes. We all know Hidden Valley's trash. We'll call it the Liz Monster. That's, that's what this pizza is, the Liz Monster. It's coming out now. And you don't want it to go right on a tray. You always want to put it on a screen and let it cool because it's crisping. And it'll get sweaty on a tray? Yeah, it'll get sweaty on a tray. And no one likes sweaty on a tray. So it's done. Lizzie, good job. I'm not going to lie. This looks very good. The toppings are spread out perfectly. It cooked great. But now we got to cut it. And I'm not going to do it. And I got this because I know she likes hugely gregarious things. I got her the biggest pizza cutter of all time. Oh, God. Is it sharp? It's very sharp. So I just go? So you slap it. Right on the side and then just go. What if when you did that I just got it straight to the forehead? Uh, you were never here. Ah! Ah! It's not gonna bite you. This is like a Chuck E. Cheese pizza. There's a theory that if somebody at Chuck E. Cheese doesn't finish their whole pizza and there's like a few pieces left, the employee will take that to the back, take those pieces off the tray, and form a new pizza. Chuck E. Cheese is not affiliated with this video. Do you think it's too hot to just take a bite? Yeah, you'll die, but hey, we can. Is it really? Thumbnail that you won't ever use. It's very hot. Yeah. Hold on, I'm also eating my hair. It's not that hot. It's really good. Good? What's your favorite part? I think it's a crust. It's the thin charred crust for me. And then it's the sauce. I with extra sauce with my extra cheese. That's the way I do it. Uh, oh, I'm tasting the Parmesan extra upper layer. That's sneaking up on me. No, that's good. Hell yeah. Oh. Thumbnail she'll never use. Oh, that's so hot. Oh, so just welcome to vlog life, mother That's rolling 24-7. Mikey, welcome to vlog life. Gang, gang. Oh, really good, buddy. Usually the guy who lives behind my house does a taste test. See that? That's how it should be cooked. Nailed it. Scale of one to 10. 13. Yeah, it's gotta be a point something. <laughs> it's the Billy Doe scale. All right. Honestly, man, I'm proud of my pizza. I'm proud that Lizzie was here to make it with me. This is like 9.9 .9 out of 10. That's the highest score I've gotten yet. <laughs> Some kind of accomplishment in this game I've made up for myself to play. <laughs> I will see. At first, I wasn't sold on this char business. But the deeper I get on this slice, I'm realizing the importance and value of a charred crust. And Chris, sir, my even though you didn't bring me a bandana, this it's in my car. This pizza slaps. Thank you. All right, Chris. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. You're the best. How much longer do I have to pretend like I care? A little bit longer. Okay. How do I get out of here? No, how do I get out of here? Oh, okay. And that's it, that's the video. I felt like I needed a break emotionally speaking after last week and it was so fun to get to go and make pizza with Chris. And again, from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna thank every single one of you for reaching out to me and sharing your stories with me. Pain is a mother and it's a little bit more tolerable knowing that I'm not in this alone. So I want you to know you're not alone. I'm here for you, like you're here for me. I'm so grateful you come here every Tuesday. This is probably the most positive space I've ever created for myself. And I'm really grateful that you're all here with me. <laughs> you good, Wolfie? Anyway, come back next week. I'm gonna give you a little glimpse into some of the other things that I do, professionally speaking. I'm gonna take you on a day directing. And we're gonna make a Lizzie original recipe. I call it Big Mac chicken sandwiches. 
Um, there will be no link in the bio because it's all in here. So we're gonna link it from from here. And, and you're gonna have to follow along. So, you know, thoughts and prayers for you guys. Um, I'll see you next Tuesday.